Hello everybody, it's Khalif PvP bringing another MMO video. This time we're giving a look at Blade and Soul. Blade and Soul is a action MMO that's PvP centric. So what does that mean? It's an action MMO similar to uh, Terra Online or Elder Scrolls. Essentially where there's no tab targeting, you have a mouse look and a cursor. And in order for you to kind of hit your skills, you need to have your cursor targeting a, a target. So like Terra, where this game kind of draws most of its similarities from, you can kind of see it in the UI, where it's very similar to, to Terra's UI. The map, for example, seems to be almost a split copy of Terra. This game is a theme park MMO. Uh, by that, I mean you go from one quest hub to another, picking up quests, finishing quests. It's not a sand park, uh, sandbox MMO where you can kind of just explore as you see fit. Uh, but you kind of have this hand-holding associated with it. With that aside, here are the four reasons why you should try out Blade & Soul. It's a free-to-play game, so you have zero excuses not to try it out. So, number four reason, no Holy Trinity. And what I mean by the Holy Trinity is pretty much what you see in every single game. Tank, Healer, DPS. In order to run a dungeon, you need a Tank, Healer, DPS. In this game, there is no Tank, Healer, DPS. And because of it, is getting into dungeon groups is super easy. Starting a dungeon group, super easy. You, you don't have to sit around and wait, looking for Healer, looking for Tank, etc. You just go do it. And uh, w an another kind of offshoot of that is the fact that since there's no Tank, Healer, DPS, if you die in a dungeon, it is your own fault. It's not the fault of the tank for you know taking aggro or losing aggro. It's not the fault of the DPS for taking too much damage, or it's not the fault of the healer for like not healing. If you die, that means you didn't pay attention and it was your fault. And because of that, I think it kind of eliminates much of that um much of that stress of uh, running dungeons. So I want to pause it here for a second and slow it down because I want to bring up my number three reason why you should try this game out. So we're about to kill a boss right now. He has a sliver of health. We'll kill him in a little bit. Um, what happens in another MMO if you kill a boss is you get loot. And once you get loot, you obviously get the dreaded loot window, which is you get a need roll or a greed roll. And if you need, you kind of have a roll chance. If you can roll a high number, it's yours, etc., etc. And the thing with this is it leaves open to um, trolling. It leaves open to somebody ninjaing something that you want, especially if it's a public group and you see an item, you really don't need the item, you just need it. And because you get lucky, you get a high number and you end up picking it up and somebody that really needed it kind of get gipped out of it. Uh, in this game, however, something special happens. In this game, you get a bidding war. Yes, I, this is a great concept and I have no idea why nobody else thought about this, at least to the best of my knowledge, before. In this game, essentially, any drop, you have a chance of bidding. It starts out at one copper and then you can go all the way up to whatever money you have. And essentially, if you really, really want that item, uh, you just bid a higher amount. And if somebody's trying to like, kind of like ninja an ad item from you, you just outbid them. and. In order for somebody to troll you, or in order for somebody to kind of uh, loot ninja, it's gonna cost them. It's not something that's free. So because of this, I really, I really like this because it kind of eliminates that. Oh man, that guy got a lucky, you know, lucky roll. He won. Blah. Um, in this game, you know, if, if there's a drop and I really, really want the drop, I can get that drop just by outbidding everybody else. So this game takes it one step further. For example, in other games, if you, if everybody passes on an item, maybe it's a junk item and nobody wants it, uh, that item just stays on the mob until some, you know, some greedy soul goes in there and picks it up. In this game, if everybody passes on an item, instead of the item, you get the cash value of that item in kind of split between all the members into their pockets. So it's really, really great because it's kind of like, oh, I don't really need this item. I don't really want to sell it, at least I'm getting something out of it. And that to me, again, is another big factor in eliminating much of the stress in a, you know, party find, LFG find, uh, dungeon group. Number two on the list, open world PvP. Now, I don't know how it will play out 
you know, two, three years down the line. But the concept of it is fantastic. And it's a concept that I really haven't seen in a how open world PvP works in Blade and Soul is there's different warring factions within the game. And as long as you wear the outfit of one of the factions that are warring against another faction, you can fight any of the members that are themselves wearing that other faction's armor. For example, I'm wearing this white armor and the guys that I just fought are wearing that red armor. Those two factions are warring against each other. So if I see anybody in game that's wearing those armor pieces, I can go ahead and attack them. Now, if you don't want to participate in open world PvP, all you have to do is take off that armor and you'll be safe. So my number one reason for trying out Blade and Soul has to be it's one-on-one -on -one PvP. It's fantastic. It's a concept that I really have not seen in modern MMO, especially PvP-oriented MMOs, where it's essentially it's you against one other player and you just duke it out. The end. Uh, it's a cool, cool concept. It's very reminiscent of a fighting game, and the action actually is very reminiscent of a fighting game. So what I mean by that is, in a modern MMO, you know, if somebody's down to let's say 10% health and another person's at 90, um, you can pretty much guess and see who's going to win, right? Some skills are bound to hit, and you're going to go and get that victory. Whoever's low health is going to lose. But in a fighting game you know that you know even if somebody's at low health he can pull off some combos pull off some you know some skill combination that essentially guarantees his victory and this game is very much like that where somebody's at 25 percent of health and another person's at 80 percent that does not mean that 25 percent health is going to lose he might just pull off some amazing combo and end up winning it so it's really really exciting to watch because of that it has that really really awesome um unpredictability that that keeps everything exciting so ladies and gentlemen that pretty much wraps up the first look at blade and soul and my thoughts on blade and souls hopefully you guys check it out if you do like the video please do like and subscribe if you think i missed out something if you think i missed a whole new concept that people would like to see Please let me know in the comment section and until next time, this is Khalif PVP.